Hello everyone, this is Hank. I'm back for another episode of Adobe Camera Raw. And today we are going to talk about the detail panel. Okay, on the detail panel you have a capability to do two things. One is to sharpen the image. The other one is to do noise reduction on it. Within the noise reduction you have the automatic artificial intelligence denoise option versus the manual noise reduction. Okay. Now on the denoise option with artificial intelligence there are two big catches to it. Okay, first would be you have to perform the the denoise on a raw file that comes from a camera. Okay, that's the first catch. The second catch is that it takes a long time to do this. Okay, for example, uh, with my laptop that I'm using, it's a little bit older, a little bit under power. It'll take seven minutes. And that's too long for me because I'm doing video in one take. So um, I, I don't know how to edit it. So I can cut out things that I don't have. So uh, with that, I already pre-done uh, one, the result, um, with the IF the AI artificial intelligence to show you the result. Okay, so I don't have to sit through with you for six minutes doing nothing. And then I also have a JPEG version of this. As you can see that if I use a JPEG, the artificial intelligence denoise go away. You cannot use it if it's not a raw file. All right, so we go back here. Okay, with this, um, even though I'm not going to run it, but I, I will start to run it and cancel it, just to show you one thing that you need to know about this one, is like when you press a denoise, okay, it will load the enhanced data and it will show you a dialog where you can choose to affect the correction of it. Okay, so it gives you the the preview of the existing image and then the preview of the image after you denoise it. And you can use the slider to change the amount. The more you have on the right, the cleaner the image is going to be with the sacrifice of sharpness and details. Okay, if you go to the left, it's going to be less correction but more detail preserved, right? So I chose 84 for this image because it is a very noisy image. And I will show you a copy of that after you're done with it. I'm going to cancel here. Actually, now my computer is getting slower. Even it says 11 minutes to do it. Before it was 7 minutes. So that's too much time. That's a really um, inconvenience. So I cancel this one. And I will show you the result that will come out of that. Okay, so first I'm going to um, magnify this thing to 55 just, just so that you can see the the um, the noise. And I go over here. Okay, and I click on the same thing to show you that with the artificial intelligence correction it did a fantastic job. Like, absolutely clean and usable. Okay, so really good to use the artificial intelligence, but if you don't mind waiting for it. Okay, so now having said that, um, what if I don't use artificial intelligence and I only use the manual noise reduction? Okay, so that would be a good lead in. Okay, um, I can either use the JPEG or the RAW, but, but I think in the RAW file, the correction is a little bit better. So, so in order for me to fairly compare between the manual reduction, uh, reduction versus the artificial in reduction, uh, I need to use the RAW file. Okay, so I'm going to use the RAW file to correct. All right, so now manual uh, reduction Okay, you have two 
two things. Okay, so you have a luminance correction and the color correction. The reason for the color is because there, there, there are some color noises. Okay, especially if you, you zoom in really, really close, you see a lot of color noise. Okay, and uh, you have luminances, these white dots here that showed up. So, um, okay, so we, we are going to correct for both. Okay, so start with the luminance, right? It start out with zero, meaning that you're not correcting anything. And you go over here. The more you slide it to the right, the more it corrects. Okay, for something severe like this, I think the correction is like way up here. Again, I'm going to use 84, just like the other one. And immediately you see that the result is pretty good. It's absolutely amazing, right? So who needs artificial intelligence, right? Okay, now, after you do that, uh, you can affect the way it looks by tweaking the detail and the contrast, okay? Detail meaning that if you slide it to the right, you are maintaining the detail. Okay, but if you're maintaining the detail, you sacrifice on the denoise part of it, okay? So if you go all the way here, okay, your denoise is kind of terrible, right? You go all the way to the left, your denoise fantastic, except you lose a lot of details. So you strike a balance between these. Okay, so maybe here. Um, it looks clean enough. It's still a little noisy, but not that bad at all. Right? So it's up to you. You can tweak it. The contrast is, is basically the same, okay, but the effect is opposite, so contrast all the way to the left, meaning that you don't increase any contrast. And um, you increase the contrast to increase the detail by moving it to the right. Like if you go over here, you bring back a lot of noises. Okay, so you strike a balance somewhere here. Okay, then you're done with luminance. Okay, you see that some of the colors start to show is like pinkish a little bit because we haven't really done the color correction yet, right? Uh, by default, it does some of it. So color correction, no color reduction would be like this. As you can see, there's a lot of color noise. Okay, so the default is 25. is already kind of correct quite a bit for you, but you can always bring it up a little bit more. And then you can tweak the detail how much of detail you want to preserve. Okay, so that, again, is a striking a balance. And the smoothness is like how smooth you want the transition to be. is like a feathering. Okay, so when in doubt, stay somewhere in the middle. Okay, so, so now let's kind of compare the artificial intelligence versus manual. Right, so that is the uh, manual correction that I just did. If you go over here, okay, you see that it is a little cleaner, but then the details are not there either. That means that if I tweak this thing enough, okay, I can get to the same point, literally. Okay, so right now, um, I, I actually, I must admit that AI is better than manual. But, you know, even manual is absolutely acceptable. Okay, so you can, you can use manual correction of any uh, format. Okay, including um, any format, including JPEG. And you get a very acceptable image. Okay, at very high ISO. All right, so that is um, um, manual denoise and artificial denoise in a nutshell. Now, 
we, now I'm going to show you the sharpening part of it. Okay, so um, so here. Okay, we're gonna um, concentrate on the, the wording so it's easiest to see the uh, effect of sharpening on it. Okay, so I'm going to use this manual thing to show you. Now, the sharpening by default, it's already sharpened some for you. Okay, so it does a default 40. Now, if you move it all the way to the left, that means that there's no sharpening at all. So this is like a true state of non sharpen here. Okay, by default, ACR is already sharpened a little bit for you. So if you don't want any sharpening, you can go sharpening to zero. Right, and then you can crank it up. Okay, as I mentioned, 40 is the default. You can go all the way beyond that, of course, with the sacrifice that you're going to bring some noise back. Okay, so you strike a balance, so let's say uh, 70, right, and then you can control the radius. The smaller the radius, the, the less noisy it's going to make. So you go over here, the result is going to be smoother, okay, but then the sharpening is not too much. So if you move the radius all the way to the right, Okay, then some noise come back, but then you have a sharper image. Okay, so again, you strike a balance. Uh, radius, I, I think the smaller radius make a better sharpening, because otherwise, uh, as you crank the detail and stuff up, it, it's going to mess up more than it helps. Now, the detail, if you go over here, then you don't improve the contrast and the detail at all. So detail is almost like contrast. So if you go all the way up here, it's going to make your your wording a lot uh, better, but then it kind of create artifacts on top of that. So again, it is a balance between the detail and the radius. Okay. So if if I set something like this, and now if I zoom in a little bit more to see. Okay, as you can see that at the higher magnification, you can see some noise in there uh, that is coming back. So you can like reduce the radius a little bit, reduce the detail a little bit. Okay. Now the last part is interesting. Okay, the masking kind of isolate which area. That, that you are going to apply the sharpening to. Right now, with the masking all the way to the left, it, it applies to the entire image. So the, sharpening, uh, the sharpening is applied to the, the entire image. For example, if you crank this one up, crank this one up, the noise that it brings back, it brings back everywhere. Okay? So, with the masking, it will help, but then if you just move the masking like this, you don't know what part of it is applied to what. So there's a trick. You gotta hold down the alternate key on the PC and option key on the Mac. Okay. And you push the slider. And as soon as you push the slider, you see a white image. When it's all white, that means everything is applicable. Because you, you crank it up, you will see that Okay, the black is going to show, and where the black is shown, that means the sharpness apply there. Okay, so this is great when you do the edges, right? Because the edge, the white, is going to show. Okay, so if you go masking like this, that means that all of the non-edge area is not being sharpened, which is great for our image because all of the noise around the area here is not applicable. So it's only applicable near the edges. Okay, so now the image is a lot cleaner because where there's no edges, then uh, the uh, sharpening is not applied. Okay, now after you do the masking to your liking, and I say there's even more than this, 
because you don't really want to shop in the non the non itch area okay and then you can tweak the um, the detail level and all of that more without afraid that it will make the image worse okay so I can crank the sharpening up decreasing the radius because the radius will have a big effect on it and maybe the detail too reduce it a little bit crank up the sharpening okay so you play with it until you get to a level that you like okay so now after you tweak it okay the image look really nice okay and it's kind of hard to imagine that this was taken at ISO 25600 don't you agree okay with that I think we're done with the detail panel little panel that could thank you and um, thank you very much for staying with me until the end of the video and I would very much appreciate a like from you and if you haven't subscribed a subscription would be completely beneficial to me thank you